And we're back to learning GIMP and this time I'm going to show you how to use the fuzzy select tool to cut out objects from backgrounds. Let's start with this image right here. And I'll copy that, the right click, duplicate the layer. And I'll rename the copy. I've made the original invisible. If you use for example the free select tool and then you press Ctrl X, you can see you've created a cutout but it's a white background and we want to have it transparent. So at first you need to right click on your layer and add the alpha channel. If it's in this grayish color, your layer already has an alpha channel. So that's the way to know that you've added one. We're going to use the fuzzy select tool here. You will also find it right here where it says select by color. Just right click on it and then select it. We want to have the anti-aliasing and the feather edges checked. And also check the draw mask. That way you can see what you do. Just left click and then drag downwards. And it'll show what you're going to select with this tool in this pink color. If you drag it down too far, you'll also select uh, things that you might not want to select. So in this case, the model in the foreground. So just left click again and then drag it a little bit upwards. If you release it, you've got your selection. You can go to select and none if you've got parts selected that you don't want to have and then redo it. So that looks like a good selection. I'll just press Ctrl X and we've got our transparent background. And then I'll press Shift Ctrl A to deselect. There's another element right here, the negative shape. You can improve the results by going over the edges. Use the fuzzy select tool again. I just zoom in holding Ctrl and then I use the mouse wheel. Let us create a new layer. I'll give it a black fill color. So this is my foreground color here. And I want that for the background. If I put it behind my cutout, you can see that the edges are still poorly selected. Especially when you use a black background, you can see it's high contrast. So just use the fuzzy selector again, but make sure that you are on the right layer. And always press Ctrl X to get rid of these parts. And you can improve the results further with this method. But at some point this method has its limits. So this is where the limit is. So I press Ctrl Z. So can we improve the results further? One way is to use a blur at the edges. Just duplicate your cutout and I'll call it blurred copy. The blur tool is right here. Just right click on the smudge tool and then select it. And you can now go over the edges. Resize it up there. It's only a small effect, but it helps with sharp edges. You can increase the rate a little bit. Another way to improve it is to just use a paint layer. So we use the paintbrush for that right here. Let me create a new layer. And this time I want to have it transparent. Let me call that brush. As my new background is black, I'm going to use black as a color here. And now I'll go over the edges with the left click and just paint it black. In many cases that helps. For all of these methods, they work better or worse depending on the image that you use and depending on a new background that you want to use. So the contrast is very important here. I'm certainly going to do more videos about selecting in GIMP. So this is just the first 
method that you can use. If you see at some point that you selected too much with the fuzzy select tool, you can see that right here at the nose when I push the original layer on top. So we've selected too much from the nose. If you run into that problem, you can fix that with the layer mask. Just copy the original layer. So right click duplicate layer and then put that on top. Afterwards, click on this sign at the right bottom to give it a layer mask. You want to have it set to black, so full transparency. And now we are on this layer. I'm going to use the paintbrush and use white as a foreground color and just paint on the nose right here. And we can add this original element of the image back. And this problem is also solved. As I've said, this is just one of the many methods that you can use to select objects and cut them from backgrounds. I will certainly make more videos and show you different methods. And you should always pick the method that fits your image best. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.